Warning, the Stone Age Gamer includes a lot of bad language. Cover your mother ears. <laughs> Good evening and welcome to episode 147 of the Stone Age Gamer Podcast for the week of April 28th, 2017. I'm Chris Randazzo and joining me as always is unreasonably long development cycle, Dan Ryan. What a bunch of assholes. (laughs) These guys suck at Hokey Pokey. (laughs) It's time once again for the 10, 20, 30, but before we go any further... Here's your weekly reminder. <laughs> because Fluffy Soft has. <laughs> Before we go any further, here's your weekly reminder that not only do Dan and I love the state, but you can email us at mail at geekade.com and let us know what you think of our show, what topics you would like to discuss in the future, or just say hello because we always want to hear from you, the listener. So, Dan. Yeah, How Chris. you doing? Oh, good. Oh, I missed you last week, but it was my anniversary. In, indeed, so, and I mean, we've we've already blown. Like we're we're recording about ten minutes late because Dan and I have just been quoting the state for about ten <laughs> minutes and laughing. Because that's us. just what happens. But yeah, dude, fucking um, nine years of uh, of wedded bliss. It was that's awesome. Outstanding. It is outstanding. My wife is super cool. Yeah, she's going up the stairs right now and blowing me kisses. Because she's so sweet. Aww. That sounds really creepy. She's not. She's showing me her boobs. It's awesome. <laughs> How is that? Never mind. <laughs> what, what have you been playing? Anything fun lately? Anything video game related? Oh, well, uh, you know, uh, Puzzle and Dragons uh, is a course. thing that I'm sort of into. Um, no, I, uh, I'll have you know that in, in the interim of uh, when I last recorded, there was a, uh, another Godfest. And as you know, I've been chasing a Ronov on my my main account, and uh, still don't have one. So that's really <laughs> that's really like five rolls, no uh, no Ronov. Um, I did get one on my Japanese account though, so that's very exciting. And uh, I got to I, I actually got to help out a friend of the show, Matt Much, uh, just last evening get past the dungeon that uh, that he was stuck on for a while through multiplayer. So nice. that was fun. Um, other than that, fuck, have I played anything else? No, I don't think so. Like, I, I went so hard on, like, the Uncharted series and, like, finishing four Uncharted games in a week and a half. It was like, <laughs> kind of need a break. break. I, I just, a little I'm break gonna, before you jump into Zelda. <laughs> before I jump into Zelda, yeah. So that's uh, that's next on the docket, as it were. Nice. I um I did get my Hylian Shield back. I don't remember if I did that before last week's episode, but... I had lost it, and then I, I bought it back again, finishing the Terrytown thing. Uh, nice. I finished Wonder Boy. Uh, it was marvelous. I bought Poyo Tetris, uh, Poyo Poyo Tetris, which is is simply delightful. Uh, if you don't have it, get it. I mean, cause <laughs> it's on PS4, too, and it is just delightful. It's if such a good If you don't have game. it, you're the worst person ever. <laughs> it's, I also got another uh, a second Pro Controller. Mm. So Karen and I could play it together. There is a sensitivity issue with the D-pad mm-hmm. where um, sometimes I'll be pressing left and it'll register as an up and up is the quick drop in the game. So I don't know. Oh, that's, a couple that's of not the, okay. <sighs> I don't know <laughs> that's, if that's really bad. I don't know if it's a settings issue or not whatnot, because there's like there are a ton of options in this game, like settings for days. And I don't know what the heck they mean. Like <laughs> there's just I don't know what any of them do. Like well, there's a fusion mode which seems really interesting, but I don't really understand it. Like understand all the rules yet, because like a lot of the game, like in the demo, you could just you would play this version of Puyo Puyo, and then it would like swap back and forth between Puyo Puyo and Tetris. But mm-hmm. there's an actual fusion mode where like you're dropping these Puyos, and then all of a sudden you're dropping Tetris pieces, and they like affect the Puyos like in the same well. It's like an actual cross between those two games. That's and weird. I, that it seems is really super weird. Fun. And I kept losing, like, a lot. And yeah. Because the computer knew what they were doing, and I didn't. I don't really understand all the rules of it yet. Like, you can't make a line out of Puyos, but you can mm-hmm. if you do a quick drop with the Tetris block onto a bunch of Puyos, it'll squish through them, and then the Puyos will land on top of the Tetris piece. It's really wacky. That's it's kind really of cool. fun. I, and there's just a ton of modes in this game. Like, there's a lot to do. So yeah. I bought it digitally because it's only thirty bucks. Uh, it's forty bucks in in retail because it comes with a keychain. But 
Oh, well, it's one of those games that I just need to have on me at all times. Fucking ten dollar keychain. Yeah, seriously, no thank you. How? Uh, I am, no, go ahead. So I know you, uh, you and Dean covered it uh, on the show last week, but Wonder Boy, everything yeah. you had hoped for. Yeah, absolutely everything. It was. Um, it, is it a looks very... gorgeous. I mean, I've been watching some playthroughs of it. Yeah, it's it, stunning. It looks stunning. It is. It was. It was absolutely gorgeous. It is the exact same game as the Master System game. There's like a few very minor tweaks. I think there's a new sword hidden somewhere. I didn't hundred percent it because uh, I've never hundred percent of that game. I've never gone for the stones. I found one of the rooms that has the stones in it, mm-hmm. and I died so many times at it. I eventually went to YouTube and looked at somebody finishing it, and I saw like the eight feet that was left past as far as I got into it. And I was like, <laughs> just thought, I'm not, I'm not, not doing that. that. Good. <laughs> I'm like, just not that good. I'm certain if I worked at this, like the way I worked at the, the hell stage and cave story for like eons, I'm sure I could find my way through this, oh, sure. but I don't want to. <laughs> that is not fun. It's just um, not a thing I am into. No, it is. It is great. The, the music is just wonderful. I can't wait till they release a soundtrack. Uh, they're still working on some rights issues, but no, yeah. I'm I I am just just pleased as punch with it. It was it was a great game worth every penny. Um and awesome. now I'm really excited for the sequel, the Monster Boy uh in the Cursed Kingdom, I think it is. Uh, whatever, the one uh, by FDGC like Entertainment is coming out and it's Yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't look as pretty as this one because it uses more of like a flash animation style, which is yeah, you know, it looks nice, but I mean, when you're going up against this is the prettiest game I've seen since like Street Fighter Three Third Strike. You know, it's, oh yeah, it's, it's just it's really cool. Looking. It is just some of the most marvelous sprite work I've ever seen, and I just, I've seen like a handful of people making comments on on like Facebook and whatnot about how why would anyone want to play this with this crappy flash animation when you could play with the sprites? And I'm like, you are ah, that is you such an so insult stupid. to call this flash <laughs> animation. It is such an insult. And like every time I see that, I link to the, the the YouTube video of the actual animators animating the thing. It's like this is not flash. They're not, you know, bending anything. Every single frame is hand drawn. I think I think things gorgeous. It's a wonderful game. Highly, highly recommend that. Highly recommend Puyo Tetris. I'm gonna wait on Mario Kart for a little bit because I don't need a new multiplayer game right now. I just sure. got Puyo Tetris. Um, but I'm definitely buying that uh, digitally because of really fast loading times. So hooray for that. Well, all right. My local Target so, was one of the ones that was all done up for Mario Kart. That oh, yeah, rad. mine too. <laughs> it's it's kind of neat. It was weird. I didn't know that that was a thing that was happening. I somehow missed that uh-huh. and uh, walked into Target last week and was like, what? Why, why am I counting down in Mario Kart? What the fuck <laughs> is going on? It's oh. weird. You were about to ask me something, I think. Oh, uh, so uh, so we're going to talk about the uh, Iron Fist Netflix series tonight, right? That's what yes. We're, what Actually, we're no, we can't. HBO. I'm not done with it yet. Oh no! What do you no. think so far? I like it. I like it too. Yeah, I don't get the hate. I, I don't either. It's I, I'm it's only not what great, s- but I'm six or seven episodes in. Yeah, it's oh. not like high art or anything. It's it's not Daredevil, but it's it's good. It gets better. Yeah, I, I'm I'm enjoying it. I mean, yeah, I enjoy the Netflix too. shows have, have they have a pretty high standard. So it's a shame that this isn't as good as those other shows. But it's not like it's tarnishing anyone's reputation. I mean, people yeah. like hate this show. Like, oh my god, it's so boring and awful. And I'm like, yeah, I don't know, man. Maybe I'm I, like I know how many. I mean, he's got to please. You know, I'm still watching Arrow. So. <laughs> <laughs> I, I am still like voluntarily watching Arrow. Yeah. So, no, I'm I mean I'm not, but not for nothing this season of Arrow has been pretty decent. But, yeah. But also if you were talking, we're talking comic book shows, people need to give Agents of Shield more credit cuz that show is so damn good now. I, I so fell good. off. I need to get back on. Anyway, all right. Anyway, so back to the show. 1020 Stone 30. Age Gamer Cod Cod <laughs> Cod, Cod, Cod Past. It's the Cod Past. <laughs> oh, the good old Cod Past. Oh, love a good Cod Past. Yeah. Uh we're 102030. So um uh, good thing we ate up a lot of time because I didn't really list all. I couldn't find a lot of good stuff coming out in April ten years ago. Let's uh, let's go ahead and flash back to the wondrous year of two thousand and seven. Ooh. <laughs> um, is, first two thousand and seven spooky. Are we I in an episode of Scooby Doo? <laughs> 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 it wasn't for those darn kids. Uh, well, let's see. First thing I got is Guitar Hero Two was released on the Xbox 360. This wasn't the really, like release of Guitar Hero Two, but this was the first version on a next generation console. So it was on PS2 previously, and then it hit the 360. And 
it was uh, Guitar Hero in HD. I love Guitar Hero. I, Me too. I mean, that they, oh boy, did they saturate the market. Like, that was the, oh, like, there are kids who, who missed all of that. Like, yeah. Just getting into gaming now, like, there are kids who missed the phenomenon of, like, every single motherfucker on the planet had some plastic instruments in their living room mm -hmm. and, like, it was awesome. And it Guitar was Hero so 2 fun. was the freaking apex, too. I mean, I, that was my favorite one. I know they then they kept making, like, expansions and Guitar Hero 3, Legends of Rock, and all this other stuff. But mm. Guitar Hero 2 was still where it was such a pure thing, you know? And uh, it was before they moved on to... Uh, it was a harmonics. They moved on to Rock Band. Right. Uh, which was also really good. But, I mean, there was... The Guitar Hero, there was something special about just that one thing. It was so easy to communicate what you were supposed to do. Yeah. And, I mean, I remember working in my game crazy, and there was this kid, Ivan, this little kid. He must have been, like, 10 or 12 years old. And he was, like, I play guitar. Not extraordinarily well, but I play mm -hmm. guitar. This kid, Ivan, could friggin' annihilate uh, the Buckethead song. Oh, wow. He just, he just come in and do it like it was nothing. I was like, and he lived like across the street from the store. He was in the store all the time. And anytime he wanted to come and play guitar here, I was like, sure, man, go ahead and play. You'll sell them. <laughs> <He's> <laughs> yeah, watching right. This kid play and it's like, I'm going to use you. Yeah, no, no doubt. Oh, man, we <laughs> love, we loved having like just playing. Someone was always playing games in that store. And it was like rarely the employees. It was always some crowd of people playing games. It was fantastic. But. Man, that kid Ivan on Guitar Hero 2 was just ridiculous. Watching him finish for the first time uh, Jordan, the Buckethead song, was like yeah. crazy. And then within a week, he was able to do it like it was nothing. Like, just crank it out like no big deal. That's Which I've awesome. still never accomplished. I've never finished that song. No, I've never finished that one. I've never finished, like, Through the Fire and the Flames that fucking, um... I finished that one. I did, did finish fi Through the Fire and the Flames. I did. I, I worked my ass off, and I barely scraped by that one but i did finish that song i i Bucket tried it I like once do. or twice and went no nope. good. <laughs> <laughs> that's not that's not a thing like i don't need to prove anything to anybody <laughs> i'm a grown-ass man I don't, I don't need to do this well like uh, i i destroyed amplitude so like when this game sure. came out i was like i know i can do this i can do this i just need to make my hands do it i can like the through the fire and flames i could i could see that song you know it made sense mm -hmm. to me Friggin' the solos in Jordan, I oh, can't ridiculous. make sense of them. Like, I can't follow what's happening on the screen. Like, I just I can't follow it. It's ridiculous. Well, and what was super fun about Guitar Hero 2 on the 360 is that this is where we got introduced to the concept of the lag with uh, with these games of like you may have to adjust your whatever in the settings. Oh, that's like, right, because oh, this was the jump it. to HD, and yeah. HD TVs, like, learning about game mode and stuff like that. Yeah, oh, you were so right. Oh, I forgot about that. Such a pain in the ass. I stuck with a CRT for so long. Like, I didn't get my... I didn't get uh, my HD TV until my 30th birthday, so... It's because you're from the past. I am. <laughs> it's just, ugh. Teams. Gotta get back. Gross. Back to the past. God, Samurai Jack is so good. Anyway, sorry. It really is. Uh, anyway. So yeah, Guitar Hero 2, awesome game. We'll talk yeah. more about it when uh, when we get to the anniversary of Guitar Hero and Rock Band and whatnot. And, you know, yep. I love them, though, and, and have nothing but positive memories of it. Like, it, it, it reminds me of, like, I felt very similarly um, with that first month of, like, Pokemon Go. Of like everybody's just playing yeah, this game. Everybody w was was into it, yeah. And like, a and everybody's happy, you know. Like, <laughs> yeah. There's like bad shit isn't happening right now. Like we're just we're playing Pokemon or like, like I met people at work who were like, oh hey, like you want to come over and play Guitar Hero? Fuck yeah, let's do this. Let's get a whole bunch of adults together and do this dumb shit. Like it was super fun. We need it was more super of that. Fun. I concur. But not that specifically, because I think I'm about done with that. <laughs> I don't know. There's like, like you know two like, songs that they might not have done yet. Five or six years from now, I would go. I could. I could stand going back to it. I think when they tried to do that reboot of Guitar Hero recently, I it, think was it was too, too soon. soon. Yeah, it, it hasn't had enough time to to really be nostalgic yet. So too soon, and the Lumineers have not put out enough music yet. <laughs> 
Right, the second of the three games that came out uh, was Super Paper Mario for the Wii. Did you play this at all? I did not. I liked this game quite a bit, and I know it gets a, 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 a rash of shit. This, um, this is the divisive Paper Mario game. It's certainly one of them, because um, there's even been more divisive ones since mm. then. But uh, this one is the one that uh, wasn't an RPG. It was, um, it was a platformer, basically, with some RPG elements. Right. And I thought that was really great. It was, it was a lot of fun. The, the 2D to 3D changing mechanic was very clever. Mm-hmm. Um, again, the writing was really, really good. Uh, I, I, I really dug this game. I really did. I never finished it because I'm a bad person, but <laughs> I did really dig this game when it came out. That's not the reason you're a bad person. There's, it's there's all those a other things reason. we won't talk about. That's a podcast for another podcast. The Why <laughs> Chris is a Bad Person podcast. <laughs> oh, God. Do we have enough recording space? <laughs> is the internet large enough to contain <laughs> my sins? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, it is. All three. No, man, Super Paper... I've, see, I've never finished a Paper Mario game. I've finished the ever-loving garbage out of Super Mario RPG, but I've never finished a Mario and Luigi or a Paper Mario game. Really? Yeah, and it's, it, it's, I don't know why, like, I just, the original one on N64 didn't, uh, I thought it was really clever, but it, I didn't buy it until way later, because I think I was busy playing something else, and uh, Thousand it's, Year Door came out on GameCube, and I was like, I don't want to play that one until I play the first one, but I should have known I wasn't going back to play the first one. Right, I mean, let's be honest here, it's, it's not as good as people make it out to be. Yeah, because like, let's it, be it's, fair, it's not. It, it's good, but mm-hmm. it got a lot of love because it was different, and it was it, it wasn't Super Mario RPG too. You know, it didn't have that same magic that Mario right. RPG had. Like Paper Mario was supposed to be Mario RPG too, um, right? But it just wasn't, and the the whole paper thing was really clever at the time because it was able to. Nintendo was able to basically skirt the limitations of the N64 by using a clever art style so that everything didn't look like a bunch of friggin' blocks. Right. And uh, that was really clever. And then when they started putting in things like the whole 2D to 3D thing and folding himself into a paper airplane and a giant desk fan is really dangerous, you know, like they started doing more stuff like that and it got really clever and creative. And the series has great music, like really, really stunning music. The, um, I remember when uh, Sticker Star came out, I really enjoyed New Super Mario Brothers U, mm-hmm. and I kind of wished that the soundtrack to Sticker Star was actually the soundtrack to New Super Mario U, because it's it's great. It's all jazzy and fun. I think it's one of those franchises where too much happens. Like, they, there's too many iterations of it. Like, they crank right. out Paper Mario and Mario and Luigi games more often than they should because I think that that takes away from some of their special nature but this game in particular Super Paper Mario being a platformer I thought was really interesting um just kind of like a platform adventure game but 2D slash it was just it was weird it's a very weird and very unique title uh but I did I I dug it quite a bit well all right then all right then, uh, and then the other major thing that happened in April of 2007 was Pokemon Diamond and Pearl. Yay, Pokemon games. Yep. They're fun. They're neat. I think I may have actually given up on Red and Blue, uh, on Pokemon Blue, by the way. Really? I Because I, I haven't gone back to it in so long, and now that I have the Switch, like, I don't see myself going back to it. Because I mean, any time I'm going to spend on that, like, I'm, I'm almost done reading... Um, console wars uh uh-huh. which means after i finish that i can finally catch up on like the three months worth of comics that i'm behind on <laughs> and i the switch zelda wonder boy blaster master poyo tetris mario kart i think there's games on this thing that i really really want to play and as much as i dig pokemon like the switch has changed so much about how i play games and when i get to play them like right. Seriously, I, I I play like twenty minutes at a time, ten minutes at a time, and I've somehow managed to rack up over eighty hours in Zelda so far. That's awesome. I haven't put over eighty hours in a game, I think, ever, like in one sitting, because games right. just weren't that long back. You know, back when I had all the time in the world. Yeah, sure. And I know the last couple of Zelda games was only like fifty some odd hours. So, I and I'm not done with this game yet. Not even close. 
I have like 70 some odd shrines. There's 120 in the game. I still have one Divine Beast left and uh, Calamity Ganon. So there's a ton left for me to do. And I'm 80 hours in and I don't see myself stopping anytime soon because it's just fun to play. And I think that's, that's well, kind of that's the best the best thing. It you know, is. like I don't have anything else to do, or like even I I might have some stuff to do, but like there's nothing pressing, moving me forward. I just want to go be in this world for a little bit. I just want to exist here and play this game. Yeah, run around, see what I can find, even if it's just for ten minutes. If I have like a five minute window, like. I bring my Switch to work every day, and I'll turn it on, like, at my desk, just long enough to scan my Amiibos. I keep them at work because my boss doesn't have any Amiibos, and she also brings her Switch in, and she scans my Amiibos every day. <laughs> and uh, it's just this fun little sharing thing we do, and then we we sit down and we have our Hyrule report. Like, every day, we just talk about what we did last night in Zelda, and it's always something different. And we, we've been doing this since the thing came out. It's crazy. Like, That's pretty awesome. It's it, it's fun, but the 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 nature of how fast the switch is to get in and out of things and its modular nature has changed so much about how I play. So it's very similar to like with 3ds being able to fold it in half and take it with you. But right, it's so much bigger and more beautiful. So if I'm gonna go back to Pokemon Red, like I or sorry Pokemon Blue, I I hate to say it, like if it came out on Switch, maybe I'd try it again. But I just don't see my like I actually unplugged and put my 3DS in its pouch away. Like I don't have it sitting out on my dresser anymore because wow, I've finished all of Rhythm Heaven Fever and now anything I want to play, I just want to play it on Switch. Like I don't want to play games on anything other than this system now. <laughs> like I just. I just want everything to be on that. I'm probably going to pony up the 25 bucks and rebuy Shovel Knight so that I can play Specter of Torment on the Switch instead of on the Wii U. When I have it for free on the Wii U right now, but I would rather <laughs> I could go play do it, it right this minute. But, but I'm not going to. Like here's a perfect example of that. Like I talked about Mario Kart. Like I was watching a comparison video of they compared from the the actual console menu to the time you press start in uh in Mario Kart. And they compared mm-hmm. it between the like the physical and digital versions on Switch and the physical and digital versions on Wii U. And it was the same every time. The digital version on Switch was fastest, followed by the physical Switch version, followed by the digital Wii U version, followed by the physical Wii U version. But the difference in time is astonishing. It's almost a minute going from the menu screen on like the Wii U HUD menu to right. where you can press start in Mario Kart. It's almost a minute. And in the Switch version, it's like 15 seconds. I, like it's so yeah, much faster yeah. to get in and out yeah. of things in this. It's so I'm more motivated to play them because it's not, I'm not tied to anything when I want to play. And uh, yeah, that's quite a tangent. Pokemon Diamond and Pearl. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I've well, never, what I've is never there played to say? I've never even sniffed Pokemon them, games. You know? Like it's you know, they're Pokemon games, and they were the first if, DS ones, I think. Right? Yeah, but they're still just Pokemon games. <laughs> Like, I know there's probably somebody listening that's going to get pissed at me for saying that. But, like, let's be clear here. The Pokemon formula is pretty basic. It really hasn't changed all that much since Pokemon Red and Blue. Yeah, I think Sun and Moon... Well, you know what? There was... I don't remember where it was, but there was definitely one major shift that happened at some point. It might have been Diamond and Pearl. And then the series' second, I think, really major shift was with Sun and Moon. I mean, those games were massively popular. I think for you know Pokemon Go probably had something to do with that, but also it was because they were there was something intrinsically different about them that was slightly more modern than the formula they had been reusing every friggin' year since Red and Blue came out. Um, but you know, it's 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 one of those like if it ain't broke, don't fix it kind of things. Because yeah, I'm not saying it's yeah. bad. I love the shit out of the first couple of Pokemon games. I I gave up on them, you know, because they were the same thing, and and I just. I don't have that much space in my head for all of that plus all the other stuff I'm into. Mm-hmm. You know, like my uh, my kids like to do this thing when we sit down to dinner. They like to uh, have alphabet challenges and uh, they'll be like, okay, I'm going to start with A, like Katie will say, all right, I'm going to start with A. And we just go around the table and you have to name a Pokemon uh, that starts with the next letter. You know, it'd be like Abra, Bulbasaur, Cubone, Diglett, whatever, you know, like go around and like Tiff and I were doing this the other night and like Tiff and I realized that like my knowledge of the Pokemon universe is 
pretty good with the original 256 or whatever. And then really starts to get pretty shaky after that. <laughs> like, it's like, okay. Uh, you guys have said the ones I know already. And, like, I know there's a shit ton of other Pokemon. There's, like, 8 million now. Think of a word modified slightly. It's probably a Pokemon. Right? Uh, you know, like, it's Centaurus. just... Centaurus. <laughs> yeah, done. You know what I mean? Like, I got Fax Z. Fax Machine or... <laughs> I got Z yesterday and pulled out Zeb Striker, and I was like, fuck yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm out. <laughs> like, that is, that is as deep as my knowledge goes. <laughs> I am done, man. All right, well, that's about it for 2007. Uh, we're going to go what ahead and take dumb ourselves... What year that was. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't wasn't a great year, but... Uh, April of 2007 can get bent. There was, there was, I think there was other stuff of, in the rest of the year, but April, yeah, it can, it yeah. can get April after. can go screw. That's right. <laughs> so uh, we're going to take ourselves a quick break. Uh, you're listening to the Stone Age Gamer Podcast from geekade.com, so stick around. And now, here's a look at some of the other original content available right now at Geekade.com. First up, at long last, Karen has finished her reread of the Harry Potter series, and with that, she has written her final chapter of Back to Hogwarts. In this final, very final installment, she breaks down the very best bits from the very best characters all the way through the epic final finale. It's the last one, so don't miss Back to Hogwarts, part the seventh and a half. What's that? She just got a copy of Harry Potter and the Cursed Child? We'll see you next month, then. <laughs> uh, it was good. Next, baseball. It's full of rich traditions like chewing tobacco and crotch grabbing. Thank you, Roseanne. But for some people, there's nothing quite like the magic of opening day. Geek Aid's Dave DiOrio is one of those people. Not that he has anything against crotch grabbing, but I suppose it just doesn't hold the same magic. Anyway, head on over to the Think Tank and read how Dave fell out of and then back in love with MLB Opening Day in the return of Opening Day Men. So I was thinking of a specific movie when I wrote that ad. Do you know what it is? Sandlot? Nah. No. What? What were you thinking the Naked Gun. Oh, okay. Yeah, all right. I guess the chewing it. tobacco scene where they're all yeah. grabbing their yeah, crotches yeah. No, and no, spitting. No. You're yeah, right. That's flaw. Just popped <laughs> into my head, and it's like, yep, chewing tobacco and crotch grabbing. That's what I think of when I think of baseball. God, I love The Naked Gun. What a great movie. I know. O.J. Simpson. Wonderful man. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, the juice. <laughs> the juice. Then it no, was I my... Think, sorry. No, no I, go ahead. I think chewing tobacco, and I think the uh, the kids in the sandlot yep. going around on the fucking um, <laughs> zipper the or whatever, just zipper, tilt the whole thing, barfing everywhere. <laughs> oh, God. Awesome. Sandlot, another great movie. Oh, my God, it's fabulous. <laughs> that movie, let's dish. Oh, my goodness. The sandlot, <laughs> Jesus. Anyway, <laughs> it was my turn to pick the episode on this week's episode uh, this week. So I went with episode three of the new Mystery Science Theater 3000, and it was glorious. Uh, we talked about it last night when we recorded the podcast. It took a very long time. Uh, at least I think it did. I was very, very tired. Uh, I decided to exercise yesterday, which <laughs> is never a good idea. <laughs> You're married and you have kids. Who the fuck are you trying to impress? It's not an impressed thing so much as a not wanting to die thing, but I wanted to die yeah. more afterwards because my legs are flaming logs now, so <laughs> that's not good. But anyway, if you want to listen to me talk about TV instead of video games, uh, including my weekly Dragon Ball Super 60 Second Summary where I recap that week's episode in under a minute every week, check out this week's episode. New episodes go live every Thursday. You know, man, I know you love it. I fucking hate Mystery Science Theater 3000. <laughs> I hate it. It's because you don't have a soul. <laughs> With every fiber of my being, it comes on <laughs> and I get angry. It's like I, I need something to chew on for a while. Like, wow. oh, just, oh, man. It's my favorite show ever. I know, and that's <laughs> why we can never be married. <laughs> <laughs> well, and it was illegal for so long. And probably will be again. Anyway, 100 days. <laughs> Finally, <laughs> Harley Quinn. 
<laughs> Harley Quinn. Harley Quinn. Did you get that? You see what he did there? It's one of the, she is one of the most loved DC characters out there, and some people thought the folks in charge of making this obsessively dark and gritty DC movies did the character a disservice in the Suicide Squad movie. Geek Aid's Gabby Robbins has brought forth an alternative for your viewing pleasure that paints everyone's favorite Jester-themed villainess in a much more interesting light. Check out some thoughts about Suicide Squad located in the Think Tank. You know, I still haven't seen Suicide Squad. Don't. Wasn't planning on it. No. It's terrible. It smells pretty bad. It, you know, like most things that DC does, just left the center. It was, it was so close to being awesome. And that makes it so much worse. That Flash TV show is pretty good, though. <laughs> is it? No, well, their TV shit is fine. Like... Apparently, Melissa Benoist is killing it on Supergirl. And oh, like Supergirl's that. wonderful. I mean, like, it's 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 CW TV, but it's still well, it's still great. Sure, but, you know, good movies, man. I don't know. Justice League. Mm-hmm. Whatever. I got my kids. Mm-hmm. We finally saw... watched uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, and they're excited to go to the theater to see Guardians of the oh, Galaxy. Oh, that's too. wonderful. I'm so over the moon excited because I was trying to think of how I could call out of work and go see the movie before having a doctor's appointment for my kid all on the same day. But now they want to go, so I don't have to worry about it. It's awesome. You can catch all this great stuff, plus tons of other articles, <laughs> videos, podcasts, and more right now at geekade.com. It's a commercial for me going to the movies with my family. Fuck all y'all. We are back. I just received a uh, Facebook message from my boss uh, with a screenshot from Zelda asking how she opens these. And I've never seen this before. Are they Deku Nut? No, it's a giant metal block. I mean, I would say use Magnesis on it. But I mean, like, oh, I've well, picked up metal blocks that. before, but mm. this thing is huge. It's like three times the size of her. I don't know where the hell that is. <laughs> I've never been there. All right, well, that's fun. So I'll be talking to her about that at some point. So back to the 10, 20, 30. Uh, we're going to travel back 20 years to the year of 1997. Triple Play 98 for the PlayStation. Man, remember when EA Sports was making baseball games? I do. And then they, they made Triple Play, and like then Triple Play went down the drain. Then they did MVP. And, and then they made MVP, and that was like the... That was so good. MVP was so fun. And then the show was so much better. (laughs) So much better. Anyway, yeah, it's, uh, I mean, Triple Play was fun. Yeah, I I remember the cover. It was very yellow. Mm, (laughs) No, Triple Play 98. Triple Play 2000 was the yellow one, I think. I don't freaking remember. It's a baseball game. Not for me. No. Um, no. So, hooray for that. Back in the day when EA, they, they went through a couple of name changes. What was their... It was always NBA Live. Mm-hmm. No, it wasn't. It was NBA Shootout before that. Oh, that was yeah. Oh, yeah, God. yeah. Yeah. Good times. Jesus. Ooh. <laughs> Let's talk about Wild Arms. That game's fucking Let's talk dope. about Wild Arms. Uh, I've never played Wild Arms. Really? Yeah, I friggin' own one and two. Never played either. Because <laughs> that's the kind of asshole I am. You really are that kind of asshole. Unbelievably great music. Really? Yeah. I really like the music in it. They were super fun. I mean, they're they're, they're JRPGs, man. They take forever. And, mm-hmm. you know, like, I, say goodbye to your family for a little while. But, you know, it's it, it was really good. Do you remember that game Wild 9? Sort of. Why do I like remember from, that game? From the Interplay people, the Earthworm Jim folks, they did a... It was a game about a dude with a glove or some something like that. Oh, something like that, yeah. I just I just remember it always being near this game when I was doing the counts at Funko Land. <laughs> <laughs> I can't think of Wild Arms without thinking of Wild Nine. Oh, uh, Wild Arms is a uh, <laughs> uh, friend of the show, Nick Grillo. One of uh, yeah. one of his favorite things. Oh, huh. yeah. I think it was Wild Arms 
two that he was more into. Hmm. I think that's what we played in college, but... Did they make yeah. a new one on PS2, or did it stop after the second one on PlayStation? No, I don't remember. There, was, there was one on PS2. Um, I think there's been a couple since then, too. Hmm. I might be wrong. I don't know. It's, it's a good series. The graphics were always cool. The battle system was, you know... RPG battle system. Yeah, it's, you know, it's RPG. It, yeah, it is what it is. Um, the story was good. Like, I don't remember there being any, like, crazy, like, twists and turns or anything like that. But, you know, it's been quite a while, but I do remember really, really liking it. Oh, good times. This next one's pretty neat. Uh, Fighters Mega Mix for Sega Saturn. Uh, I've played, like, 15 minutes of this game before. <laughs> this is a crossover between... Uh, am I right about this? Is a crossover between Last Bronx and Virtua Fighter? Something like that? Is that it? I feel like Last Bronx was it. I gotta look this up. I've never played it. I definitely played, played a few it. minutes I... of it, but I don't know enough about Saturn fighting games that, like, I know Virtua Fighter. I'm not good at it. Well, sure, um, but... Oh, Fighting Vipers. Uh, it combines several, from Wikipedia, combines several characters from various Sega games, from the complete cast of Virtual Fighter 2 and Fighting Vipers, to Janet from Virtual Cop 2, and the Hornet Car from Daytona USA. That's what this game is famous That's for. Thank right. you. I knew there was this something that I knew about this game. The car. <laughs> oh, that was so fun. Boy, it was something. Oh, Rent a Hero, uh, Siba from a prototype of Virtua Fighter, Ura Bon is something from Fighting Vipers, AM2 Palm Tree, the developer's emblem is playable character. <laughs> and that's Mr. kind of awesome. That's great. And then, like, these people made friggin' uh, was this the same team that made the so Sonic the Fighters game? Because that game's awful. Because <laughs> that game is. That game was just putrid. <laughs> it's not fun in bollocks. the least. Uh, speaking of dog bollocks, I did not I did not understand why this game was as popular as it was at the time, but this is uh that the Saturn version of Hexen came out Hexen. In, in April of ninety seven. Like this it was, was so metal and so dark and so awesome. Ugh. This was like it was like when Doom Three came out, where it was like it's it's like Doom, except it's not fun. Yeah. It's like it's, no, there's nothing lighthearted about it. Like I know it's it's ridiculous to say that Doom is lighthearted, but seriously, Doom one and two were not trying to be like serious horror. They were trying to be friggin' Army of Darkness. Like they yeah, were no, they fun were, and they funny were... and bright and goofy and stupid and wonderful. Love what? those games. And it was just it was really kind of a weird thing at this time in like in the late '90s of you know it's like okay we've got these systems that are capable of rendering relatively impressive graphics, but they certainly don't look real. Mm -hmm. Stop trying to make shit look real. Yeah. Because <laughs> it just, it comes off as way stupider. Like, it's way and less scary when, like, the polygon man is chasing me. Like, all right. <laughs> well, Hexen it. still used those, like... The 2D sprites Doom style, right? Or did it was Hexen full 3D? I'm thinking it was of something 3D. else. It could be. I don't know. I've I've not played very much of it. It was I didn't do a lot of first person shooters on consoles because uh, outside of the original Doom, I've never been very good at first person shooters. And right. And I mean, especially the Saturn version of Hexen, like there was yeah, no second yeah. analog stick there, so <laughs> so that's not happening. So a big big fat no, thank you there. Not uh, happening. Opposite side of the spectrum, a wonderful, wonderful bit of gaming that I need to spend more time with. Really never gave this game the shot that I, I wanted to just because I never owned it. But uh, mm -hmm. Mystical Ninja for N64, the first, uh, what I think it was just called Mystical Ninja 64. Um, and then wasn't there like Mystical Ninja Goemon or something yeah, like that? Yeah, That's the same thing, right? That. Yeah. <laughs> These games are so crazy. Like, played a little bit of the Super Nintendo one. I've never spent a lot of time with them, but... They're so weird. They're good games. Yeah, they're was, fun. They're cute little things. I'm like really impressed that they came out in America. Like, it's such a Japanese series. I cannot believe they decided to localize it. But they did, and hooray for that. It's charming and cute and was a fun like exactly what we were just talking about with Hexen. Like, don't try to make this look real. Like, make a cute little ninja. You know what I mean? You're not trying yeah. to make Tenchu. Like, I, mean, I love Tenchu, but, like, come on now. 
Yeah. Especially in the N64 when it was like, blocky AF. <laughs> yeah, right. Like, just come on. Make something cute. Make it fun. And you Mystical gotta, Ninja You gotta use style. Good. And Mystical Ninja yeah. had style to spare. Like, the game's weird. It's it's cool. It's quirky. Oh, I'm, I've, I'm, I'm glad this game exists. It may not specifically be for me, but it's one of those things that just makes mm-hmm. me happy to know it's there. Cool series. I assume you don't have much experience with this specific mm-hmm. one. Yeah, I mean, either. I do not. Oh, well. He's got blue hair. I do not. I, look, in 1997... You were playing Hexen all day, every day. (laughs) Fuck, played Hexen. Firing up your Sega Saturn. It was Hexen. Nothing, (laughs) nothing but Hexen. (laughs) Nah, man, like, I got my first job. I was working. I was going to school, like, you know, I was in high school and shit. Like, I was way more concerned about... Like, this is the kind of time period where I, I fell away from games for a little bit. Like, I still had consoles and whatnot and still played, but I certainly didn't attack it with the, uh fervor that I had in my youth. I was attacking other things with a certain youthful fervor. If you catch my drift. Hey. Yeah. Dan <laughs> loves drugs. <laughs> <laughs> I, it's, not, it's not even that I want to. I need to. It's a responsibility. <laughs> Fuck. Uh, what is that meatwad line? God damn it. It's so funny. I don't remember what he's talking about, though. Oh, is he talking about, like, the TVs or something when Master Shake keeps breaking them? Oh, God, I don't know it. I don't know it. Oh, this... He doesn't even want to. He needs to. That's a responsibility. <laughs> so funny. Oh, anyway. <coughs> Next up on the list, uh, Kirby's Star Stacker for the Game Boy. This is kind of relevant because it's, like, the, the folks at IGN say this a lot, and it's very true, that once the Kirby games start coming out in your system en masse, you know you're about to die. <laughs> <laughs> you know shit has come off the rails. It is the end of your life cycle. And, like, oh, a Kirby mean... puzzle game is no bigger no, no bigger symbol for the end of a console cycle. No, we are fresh out of shit. <laughs> <laughs> this is black and white Game Boy in the out age of, of Nintendo 64 and Saturn and PlayStation. Like, it was... Yeah. Writing was 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 had been on the wall for a while, and and Star Stackers, I don't dig this game, and I love falling block puzzle games, and yeah. I just never this one never clicked with me. Like I was just talking to Dan earlier about how much I freaking love Puyo Tetris, like freaking love it, and I don't know, man, Kirby Star Stacker, and I love Kirby too. I love Kirby games, and I thought Kirby puzzle game, sign me up, I'll take it, I'll play it, put it on my Super Game Boy, sit and play it for hours. I'd play it and be like, nah, I'd rather play Wario's Woods. Just, just <laughs> didn't This game did not do anything for me. Hey, are you, I correct uh, in assuming that you have never even sniffed this title before? No, God, no. Have you, uh, have you seen um, the officially licensed Kirby lingerie? I have. It's really disturbing. It's super disturbing, right? Like, does that mean that this is the end of lingerie? <laughs> Either like, that or a brand new form of Len lingerie is about to come out. The the panties, like, all right, so they, they're like regular panties, but the Kirby face on the back, he's making like a <coughs> kind of face, like a, yeah, like a, it's a, what are you checking out right there? Like, we're right above the, the cleftal horizon, and, um... It's just weird, man. <laughs> it's fucking, I'm looking at him right now. And the art, like, the, the photos. The photos that have the little copyright Nintendo HAL laboratory on the bottom. There's, like, a girl with her butt cheeks hanging out with Kirby underwear on. And there's, like, a Kirby, like, hugging her and peeking over her shoulder. It's fucking weird. And, like, the weird dresses and stuff where, like, they're holding out their arms. Just these big circles. I don't know not understand. It's so I, weird. It's so strange. I mean, good on you, I guess, but ah, it's the end of lingerie. All right, that's fine. Can I just can I just say that the, this wonderful thing just happened to my house, where uh, the baby has been really loud in the bedroom with my wife for a while now, and uh, now the baby is quiet. And Karen just came out and grabbed a beer and the switch and went back into the bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> Parenting is awesome. 
It was just the look on her face when she took that beer. Is like, I feel so bad for my wife. She is a freaking trooper. My wife is my goddamn hero, okay? She sits in alone in the bedroom, not alone, but she sits in the bedroom with the baby so that I can do this show every week. She is the freaking hero of this podcast. She certainly is. What type of beer did she grab? No, no clue. I'll oh. ask her, though. Come on. All right. I, I can't see that far. Come the on, kitchen's Chris. all the way over there. I don't I'm, know. It was the brown thing. Was... <laughs> I am I am drinking a Bolero Snort Blazed Double IPA, <laughs> and it's awesome. I love Bolero Snort. Please send me free beer. Come I'm on, drinking water. God, Please send me boo. free water. Such a girl. Well, the last <laughs> important thing that happened in April of 1997. This, hold on. Before you say it, <laughs> in, the, in the 147 episodes that we have done this show, and let's be honest, it's like 130 that we've done together. I think like between you and I, we've probably missed that many. Um, more me than you, let's be honest here. Um, this is my favorite thing that I think you've ever written in notes for a show. <laughs> this is so awesome. And it's not going to be awesome to everybody, but it's so awesome. In April of 1997, April 1997, Duke Nukem Forever began development. Begins development. <laughs> that game came out two years ago. That game came out in 2015. <laughs> or and maybe 2014. I, fucking, I don't even remember because it was horrible and I didn't play it. But God damn it. Yeah. Began development. Oh boy, that's uh, awesome. That's so yeah. funny. This just, just it seemed important to me to mention. It's so funny. It's so funny that they like they kept with it the whole time and they were like, nah man, it's gonna be fucking dope when it comes out. Don't you even worry about it. This game, we're gonna delay it so that it's awesome. So that it's perfect. We're gonna let this marinade it's like a fine wine. <laughs> Duke Nukem began development 20 years ago. <laughs> so stupid. It's a first person shooter. How hard is it? Oh, God. Come fucking Activision can crank out COD after COD and get COD blops and COD blah and bleh <laughs> fucking every year. Ugh. All right, we'll hop it in the old Wayback Machine. Thirty years to nineteen eighty-seven. Uh, we got a couple of couple of winners here. We've got mm -hmm. uh, Operation Wolf in the arcade. Mm -hmm. Very good shooter. Fucking loved that game. That I think that might have been the first like arcade shooter that I really played, like and mm. really like spent some time with. Probably not the first light gun game that I had ever seen, but. I don't know, like the the fucking Uzi that was on the cabinet was super cool. Yeah, that was and awesome. And the little the little red button on the side that would make you like toss grenades and shit. Fucking loved Operation Wolf. I actually played the NES ass. version first, so I was really impressed when I went to the arcade. <laughs> oh, like, oh, this is a revelation. This is so much. Not better. that the NES one is it's it's not a bad port, but no, like, it's not. But it's, it's also not a friggin' Uzi attached to an arcade cabinet. So cool. It was so super cool. cool. I love that game. And, like, that game is kind of responsible. Like, I still get, like, internally geeked up every time I see, like, a light gun shooter like that. Yeah, like, if I, I happen to be, like, walking shooters. by somewhere and there just happens to be one, I'm like, oh, fuck. I want to go play it. Like, it doesn't even matter what it is. I played Aerosmith the Revolution X game. Like, I'm going to fire CDs at people. Like, whatever. Fuck, cool. Maybe. No, no. Revolution X is not fucking cool. But, like, ah, oh, dude, the alien ones are super awesome yeah. now. Like, ah, oh, the Jurassic World. Ghost what, like, Squad for oh, Wii. Fuck. That game was ridiculous. So good. It was so fun. Fucking light gun shooters are amazing. They're like, awesome. Light gun shooters are the reason that Dave & Buster's is able to charge the exorbitant prices that they do. Because light gun shooters are amazing. Because light gun shooters are amazing. And they have the <clears throat> giant claw thing where you can, like, pick up a person with it. Awesome. True. Uh, quintet for Sega Master System. You're you're the Master System guy here. T talk to me about some Quintet here. It's a game that came out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know Quintet. Really? I don't I think I little, do. I know a little of uh, Quintet. What is Quintet? Uh, Refresh my memory. 
I'm actually trying to remember it. I know the game. I know I have it. I know that it's interesting. I know it's on a lot of people's uh, top 10 mass system game lists. I'm checking to make sure it's not on ours. I don't think it was. If it was, you're going to have to go back and edit this shit. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> Gangsta I don't Channel, believe it Asterix, was. Our type, Golden X Food. Oh, Quartet. That's the one that was on mine. Yeah, this is... Quintet is not Quartet. No. Was Quintet the sequel to Quartet? Everybody knows that. Wow, now I'm really confusing myself. I need to look this up. I should have done research before the show started, but I was installing an air conditioning unit in my house, so... Uh, I was playing Puyo Puyo Tetris with my mm. wife. I was doing man things. No, no, I think I actually mean quartet. Okay, because quartet is cool. <laughs> yeah, no, I think I, I think this may have been an autocorrect situation. Uh, okay. Yeah, no, I think I think I actually do mean quartet. Is okay. quartet a real word? Yes, it means four. Where did I get quintet from? I don't know. I'm so confused. Like, write, yeah, no, like, qu quartet's freaking awesome. Let's go ahead and say it was quartet. I, I could be okay. wrong. The uh, amazing box art. Yes. Amazing <laughs> Master System. That's the next thing. Chris, when did we publish the Sega Master System top 10 list? This was April of 86. Is that what we're... we're no, that's no, not when we published it. We did not publish yeah. it in April of 86. No, no, no. That's when the game came out. <laughs> if No, it can't be Quartet because that was the year before. I don't know what the hell I'm talking about here. So what, mm. what, what did you ask me? When did we publish the, the Master System mm -hmm. one? October 8th, 2015. 2015. Fuck, we missed the year anniversary. All right, so for the two-year anniversary, we're going to do the top 10 box arts for Sega Master System games. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm really excited for it. Like, Book seriously? It or Yes. <laughs> No, I mean, however we're going to do it, but whatever. Well, I mean, because, like, there there were some actual good box arts on there. You no, know, no, like I'm talking the Gulf white. Elias. You're talking about, like, great soccer and, and pro I'm wrestling. Pro <laughs> wrestling and black belt, which is just a foot. Just a foot. <laughs> a foot. I mean, obviously a poorly the, the, drawn foot at that. The Sega card games <laughs> take, take the cake because they're a picture of the card. <laughs> <laughs> Here's what's inside this. <laughs> yes. And there's a hand <laughs> holding it, too. I was always so disappointed when I opened it up and the hand wasn't in there. God it's like it. that. that, that the, um, Konami did a re-release of, I think it was Dawn of Sorrow on DS or something. Yeah. And it was like, it was a picture of the box. <laughs> the box. <laughs> God, the fuckers make it any more obvious you don't care. <laughs> Bastards. Uh, it's anyway. it's it's no Capcom using the IGN logo in their Okami box art for Wii, but it's still pretty great. Oh yeah. <laughs> anyway, God. Quartet's badass. Quintet is not a thing that exists. So <laughs> I I don't know. Awesome. Oh, I'm sorry to all of our listeners. If Quintet is a thing that came out on the Master System in 1987 in April, then please let us know because clearly we don't know what we're talking about. Uh, on the Atari 2600, Summer Games. Fuck yeah, Summer Games. Yeah, Summer Games is cool. I had this on my old Mac. Um, it's so like fun. My old Macintosh black and white computer. It's these, these Epics Olympics games were like super fun when they were good. The one, the events yeah. that didn't make any sense. Like I remember the figure skating and just being like, I, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm pressing <laughs> buttons this, and this she's doing working. things. I, I don't get it. I'm confused, scared, a little cold. <laughs> Sitting there like, that is so not a triple sow cow. Yeah. That is that was a double toe loop at best. You call that Bush a Lutz? <laughs> you you call that a Lutz? The fuck is wrong with you? I'm Barry Lutz with the Barry Lutz show. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't even matter if it's funny to anyone else but us. You don't like it record your own podcast. I, hear I say you get say, a monkey and torture the hell out of it. <laughs> well, that would be true. If that wasn't my friend Dave calling in from the side. He's calling a drink. A big fucking margarita. Monkey torture. Monkey torture. Uh, track and field came out for the NES. Really good port of track and field, by the way. The uh, sit down and bang the shit out of the power pad with your hands game. 
No, not world class no, track no, meet. No, track and field. Yeah. It's the Konami arcade. Oh, thing. okay, you're right. Oh, actually, yeah, that one was amazing. It was really good. Track and field two, I think, was even better. Um, Which one has the fencing? Is that one or two? Two. Two has two. fencing. Oh, that was a Loved dope. track and field two. Like yeah. great sprite work in that game. Some just just Pretty giant good. gorgeous sprites in that. Uh, no, track and field one and two were great. Uh, I loved two. I played that one. My rental store had two. My rental store did not have one, so I didn't mm. play one until way later. Um, but uh, they have a track and field one arcade unit at um, Yestercades. Oh no uh, shit! Which I've been to a, a handful of times. Love that place, and I've spent a lot of time with the old track and field unit, and it is definitely a butt masher to the extreme. It's fun but, uh, though, like yeah. very fun, very fun. You don't need a lot of skill; you just need to go have fun. That's like that is how you do Olympic games, by the way. Like, yeah, that is just how you do Olympics games. I want a real. Actually, I want it to go the other way. I want a real, like, in depth Olympic game. Like, I want to pick a sport and like start training when I'm seven. <laughs> curling, <laughs> go through the whole thing. Be awesome, Dan Ryan, master curling. <laughs> curling is the <laughs> dumbest. I don't care. Fucking people try to pretend curling is cool. Like, oh, stop it. It's not fun. It's not even funny. I don't I don't get it. It's dumb. But when it's on on during the Olympics, I freaking watch it. Oh god. And I'm like, I find myself getting really into it. Like Do you? Is it gonna get is the stone gonna hit the other one? Is it (sighs) wait it did. Is that good or bad? I don't understand the rules. But this is so interesting. (laughs) I mean, like, I'll watch the shit out of Olympic badminton, but fuck (laughs) curling. I love the Olympics so much. Me too. I just, I want sumo in the Olympics. That's what I want. It's so sad that it's not. And you know what the weirdest thing about the Olympics is? The fact that they use the Briscoe County Junior theme for it. Like, <laughs> that's so crazy to me. Every year, with every single time when the Olympics come on and they bust out the Briscoe County Junior theme, I'm like, it's the Briscoe County theme. That's so weird. <laughs> this next Olympics is going to be banana sandwich. I know, like, friggin' Goku is an actual, like, representative for the Olympics or something. That's I'm, awesome. I'm, That's I'm so, so jazzed cool. for it. It's gonna be so good. I am pumped. Oh, All right, man. last game. Russian attack. As in Rush N attack. Not right. Russian attack. It's not, <laughs> not, not our Colossus future. versus Omega Red here. No, we're, we're talking... <laughs> oh, you, you know, went, like, you went with a comic book reference. I was just depressed about the state of our election. <laughs> no. Yeah. No, Boo. let's not think of any of that stuff. Russian Attack. Russian Attack is great. This yeah. game's super fun. <laughs> it was a great arcade port. <coughs> um, like it, I remember it. You know, memory's not what it used to be, but um, I remember it being very faithful to the arcade and looking pretty damn similar. You know, like it wasn't, it wasn't an Operation Wolf situation where I was like, oh, well, oh, jeez. I don't even want to play. Like, even Commando, had there was, like, a huge separation in, like, the Commando in the arcade and Commando for NES. But, like, I remember Russian Attack. Like, it certainly looked better in the arcade, but but it played pretty much the same and controlled pretty much the same. And it was super fun. You know, there is a great, like, surprisingly good port of Commando for Atari 2600. Really? It's even got that the music in it. It's so weird. Yeah, you know, they made some, like, crazy good... I'm I'm taking a quick look at the. There's a great uh, gaming history source. is a great uh, YouTube channel. Uh, they mm-hmm. do these let's let's compare videos. Mm. Oh, Russian Attack is a game called Green Beret. Oh. I did not know that. That's an, a much better alter- name for the game. An alternate title. Yeah, it really is. Like Russian Attack. I'm like, okay. I mean, like I get it. Like it's it's pun. <sighs> it's not funny, but it's not. All right, so yeah, I'm checking out the arcade version of it. Yeah, it looks pretty, pretty good, right? It looks. It doesn't look like amazing. <clears throat> it looks like it, you know. It looks awesome, but it's like yeah. If my memory serves me right, it doesn't look that different from the S one. Of course, now I'm looking at a BBC Micro port, uh, which mm. is absolutely hideous. Uh, with the Commodore Plus. Ooh boy, that's that's ugly. That's uh, a thing. Atari 800 XL. Wow, that's 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 the worst so far. <laughs> MSX, pretty rad looking. Uh, really not good, but rad. Uh, let's but see, radical. MS, MS DOS. Oh boy, here's here's our winner so far. Everything's oh, pink. MS DOS like games. Mega Man Three games. Uh, now we're up to Commodore sixty four, which is looking pretty snazzy. That's not bad. That's not a bad looking port. Uh, Armistrad. Where the hell's the NES one? Jeez, this thing was ported to everything. 
Uh, ZX Spectrum, which is, you know, to be expected, looks like garbage because everything on that does. Oh, Game yeah, Boy was... Color. Yeah, the Game Boy Color port looks pretty good. There you go. Not too shabby. There's the NES one. Oh, wow. That is really, really close. Right? It's pretty damn close. Yeah, that is that is a very, very nice port of that. What else we got? This game was on DS. What is this Russian attack expatriate? What is this? I don't know. Did they make a we, new one? Why are we discovering things on the show? Fuck. Everybody's going to know we didn't. Do <laughs> Everyone's research. going to know we're frauds. <laughs> <laughs> this well, is a textbook even... case of fraud. <laughs> fraud. <laughs> I don't even play video games. Vidge games. <laughs> Vidge games. Vidge games. Russian attack. All right. I'm looking at the Wikipedia right now. Did I haven't they thought make about this game. Or something? 360 game. Good Lord. I haven't I'm thought sure about this great. game in forever. <laughs> oh, I'm sure it's the best one ever. Um, it was released for the Xbox Live Arcade. No, that's not the one. I'm... Ah. The running game. Blah, blah, blah. Cold War. No, this doesn't help me at all. Anyway, Russian Attack. Awesome game. Yeah, I I really I really enjoyed it. I can um, go back and play this one again. I haven't, I haven't touched this in Jesus. Oh, right, here we go. Russian Attack Expatriate is an official sequel to Russian Attack, released as a digital download for the PS3 and Xbox 360 in 2011. Hmm. Developed by Czech-based Vatra Games, who also worked on Silent Hill Downpour. So, Should have been called Silent Hill Drainpour. Am I right? Should have uh, just jumped it. Yeah. So basically, like, some people saw how good the Bionic Commando remake was and thought, I can do that. Yeah. What much. do we got? What do we got laying around? Konami, <laughs> they'll sell anything. <laughs> they they certainly will. What, um, ah, shit. What was the, uh, EA, I think, put out a game that was similar to Russian, like, it felt sort of similar, and it was a dude, like, with a knife, mostly. It was like a side-scrolling, they made, like, two of them. Fuck, that is not a good description of the game. No, <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> Not following that one. <laughs> it's like a game with a dude, and he's got like, you know, Preston, Preston. He wears like shirts. Samsonite. I was way off. <laughs> Fuck, now I gotta know. <clears throat> EA. Game, dude with knife. <laughs> dude with kniff. Let's see. I'm on the edge of my seat here. I I'm, I got to know what you're talking about. I I oh man, <clears throat> I'm looking. No fuck, I got game dude. Um, you probably shouldn't actually type in dude with knife. I did type in dude with knife. That is how. <laughs> oh man, like and what sucks? This is what sucks about doing like podcasts and whatnot is that I promise you, there is somebody listening to this right right now who's like, oh, it's a fucking knife game. You know, like, they know exactly what I'm fucking talking about. Um, it was a download-only game. Fuck. So it was recent? Yeah. Oh, jeez, I've, I've got nothing, man. No no clue. Maybe it wasn't EA. Oh, man. I played the demo for it. I really liked it. Hmm. Anyway, uh, yeah, that, was our that was our last just, game. Well, I'm just going to do this. Dan thinks about that. Uh, <laughs> That's our show. Join us next week when we might actually get around to doing that April Fool's episode we've been talking about for a month. April Fool's, we're not fucking doing it! Ah! <laughs> Once again, you can get in touch with us at mail at geekhate.com. <laughs> I'll, I'll love you with you. These bags weren't designed for tacos. <laughs> as well as all flavors of social media that we inhabit. Know. You can like us on Facebook, find us on Instagram at Geekade, subscribe to our YouTube and Twitch channels for all our latest video contact and f content, and follow us on Twitter at the underscore Geekade. You can also find us individually on Twitter. I'm at Geekade Chris, that's Geekade K-R-I-S, and Dan is at... Dude with Knife. Dude with uh, knife. <laughs> Geekade Dan. With knife. If you're interested in more information about anything we discussed here tonight, be sure to check out our show notes. And while you're at it, you can also subscribe to this and any of our other wonderful <laughs> podcasts on iTunes or Stitcher. Or if you just want to listen to Dan and I laugh at each other. Or <laughs> you're super nice, you can leave us a review, but don't review this. Episode. Shank! I found it! Shank. Shank? Shank. I've never even heard of it. Is Shank it is EA? fucking awesome. It's right. so 
it was so good. I liked it, and it reminded me very similarly to like games like Russian Attack. All right, fuck. All right. Anyway, go on. Anyway, we would like to uh, thank our intrepid editor Evan for making the show listenable for all you folks. And he's and got we'd also like to thank cut Mark from this week. Well, yeah, he does. We'd also like to thank Mark TDK Knight for our show's theme. You can check him out on SoundCloud and Bandcamp or his website, which we'll have a link to again in the show notes. Always remember to keep your eyes on geekade.com where we try to post something new every single day. We don't always succeed. No. Oh, all right. Well, some uh, of us aren't good with deadlines. No. <laughs> I'm pretty good with it. I miss You're every now and again, but I think out of everybody, I don't know. I think I'm pretty good. You've been doing Wild of Wrestling every week pretty consistently for like a couple of years now. For like so. two, three years. Kind of hard to argue with that. Anyway, yeah. uh, that's our show. Good night, everybody. On behalf of Dan and myself, <laughs> keep playing games.